Welcome to our second lecture for invertebrate biology. This video is going to be all about phylum periphera. Now this word periphera means pore bearing. Remember that a pore is a hole. So these guys were named for the fact that they have holes all over their bodies. We typically know our periphera as sponges. And by this we mean sea sponges, not our kitchen sponges. And there are about 5,000 species of periphera, mostly in the ocean, but there are some freshwater species. So let's take a look at sponge structure and feeding. All right, well, first thing to know about sponges is that sponges have no tissues. They are instead a mass of colonial cells with different functions. So like we said, they are a mass of colonial, so same genes, clones of each other, yet differentiated, meaning they've got different functions and structures. All right, so we've got those different cells all together. Sponges are sessile, meaning that they are attached to one spot. And because they are attached to one spot, they can't go catch their food. And so sponges are filter feeders, meaning they filter their food out of the water. So what exactly does a sponge body look like? So let's say this is the outside of our sponge body. Okay, that's where the tissue is. What you'll have is you will have harder tissue and some skeleton on the inside. And what you'll have here, these are holes that go the whole way from the outside of the sponge to the inside of the sponge, right? On the outside, these little holes are called ostia. And this is where the water enters the sponge as the sponge is filtering. Okay, and then the water comes up and goes out of the large hole at the top which is called the osculum. Okay. Now some of this happens just because of the almost the fluid dynamics of the sponge. However, on the inside walls of the sponge, there are also these special cells called collar cells, which have kind of like a membrane skirt and a flagellum, and they beat this flagellum and it causes the water to kind of pull through the sponge. So let's take a moment and watch a video so you can see what exactly this looks like because many times we forget that sponges are even animals. Sponges are very effective filter feeders since they're able to capture and eat particles as small as bacteria as well as larger particles. They might not look like they're doing much, but a simple demonstration shows how effectively sponges can pump water. On a reef in the Caribbean, I make a dive with a syringe filled with a non-toxic dye called fluorescein. By squirting it around the base of some sponges, we can observe how the water is moving by watching what the dye does. Within only seconds, the dye is pumped through the sponges along with the water. As you can see, a sponge is a pretty good water pump and also a good strainer. Any plankton that goes in with the water won't come back out through the osculum. Tube sponges are even more spectacular to observe. They pump the dye so furiously that they look... All right, so that's what it looks like when sponges pump water through. They use that to capture their food since they are, in fact, filter feeders. All right, now another challenge if you are sessile or stuck to one spot is reproduction because you can't go and find yourself a mate. So what happens, sponges have two options for reproduction. One is to reproduce asexually, 
Okay. Um, to do this, if you've got a sponge living by itself, it can do something called budding, where it makes another, it basically pinches off a small piece of itself, makes another little sponge right next to it. Now this is good if you have no mates, or if you're doing really well in your environment, or you've got abundant resources. It's not so good if you're running out of space or if the environment isn't so good because there's no way you can um, increase your genetic variation. All right. The other option is sexual reproduction. All right now, again, a sponge can't walk off and find a mate, so they release their sperm into the water column. Um, some species will also release their egg into the water column. Most, though, another sponge will filter the sperm in where it will meet with and fertilize an egg, and it will create a larva that can then go swim away and find a new place to settle and create a new sponge. All right? So this is advantageous if you um, need to find someplace new to live. Um, it also helps increase your genetic diversity, which kind of gives you more chance of um, surviving well and having higher fitness in the environment, but it's risky because you're not entirely sure whose genes you're going to combine with or that you will actually find a better environment for your larva. So another thing that can happen with sponges, because they have no tissues, they can do this really interesting thing where they can be broken apart um, into individual pieces. So basically you take a sponge and you shove it through a fine mesh, breaks apart, apart into individual pieces, into even individual cells. And what gradually happens is those cells find each other and reform a new sponge. Okay? Um, so these sponges can regenerate in that way. If a sponge is broken apart, it can find, basically, if it lands someplace new, it can keep growing. What's really interesting with this is even if you mix two sponges of the same species, but two individual sponges, and you mash them up and grind them together, the two sponges will separate from each other. So they're able to even recognize their own cells. All right, so now let's think about our sponge with these six characteristics. These are the six characteristics we're going to use to classify all of our invertebrates. So our sponges have asymmetry. They can't be cut in any way to make symmetrical halves. For their skeleton, they have an endoskeleton with flesh on the outside of it. And the endoskeleton can either be made of spicules, which are kind of hard and brittle, very similar in construction actually to glass, or spongin, which is flexible and spongy. Sp some sponges will have a little bit of both, um, but if you do ever use a sea sponge as a loofah in the shower, you are scrubbing your body with the skeleton of a dead sponge. Okay. For the digestive system, they have no true digestive system. They, Even though they pull the water through their body, they're really just absorbing the nutrients from the water. Um, they have no true circulatory system, they have no segmentation, and they have no nervous system. Right, the cells just communicate directly with one another. If we look at our cladogram, our sponges are on this first branch. What makes our sponges, our periphera, different from our other organisms is that they have no tissues and they have asymmetry, while well, all the others came from a symmetrical ancestor with tissues. All right, that's it for sponges. After this, go ahead and watch our scientific drawing video to proceed with today's task.